Investing, that's what people with money do, right? The experts, the people that are in the know. When we hear about investing, this is what we usually see. But what if we told you that we don't all have to be expert traders to be successful in the stock market? With some basic guidelines, anybody can be a smart investor. In this series, we challenge some of the biggest misconceptions about investing by looking at true stories in investment history. And in the process, we teach you some of the basic ideas that every investor should know. Let's start off by learning from the best, one of the most successful investors in the world. They call him the Oracle of Omaha, Warren Buffett. He bought companies that he thought weren't especially exciting, but were likely to generate decent returns over time because the companies were well run. A boring but deliberate strategy, one that has clearly brought him his success. And he doesn't mind pointing this out to Wall Street. Warren Buffett, the billionaire investor, made a friendly bet against hedge funds, and the winner will get $1 million to donate to charity. So in 2007, he decided to initiate that. I invite a hedge fund manager to come up and give me a bunch of hedge funds. And I'm gonna propose a passive strategy involving no work over a 10 year period. To win the bet, Buffett picked the most unspectacular kind of investment around, an index fund. We'll get to that later. First, let's have a look at who he bet against. Enter Ted Seides, a fund manager with an active investment strategy. There are two kinds of investing, active and passive. So an investor who invests actively, they're really looking around for stocks especially that are undervalued, and they want to buy those stocks before the rest of the investing world figures out <laughs> that the stock is undervalued. You buy low and you sell high, and the difference between the low price and the high price is big. So active traders like Sides and other hedge fund managers try to beat the market. Whether the market is going up or down, it means trying to be one step ahead of all the other investors out there. And sometimes people try to beat the market in the most elaborate ways, like using sophisticated algorithms to be milliseconds ahead of the competition. This gentleman even used satellite imagery of department store parking lots to get an edge. The more cars in the lot, the better the store must be doing, so the more stocks he bought. Trying to beat the market is a strategy most of us can't afford, though. It takes a lot of expertise, time, and money. Let's be honest, most of us can't afford to rent a satellite. Considering all this, the world of investing might seem intimidating to enter, but it doesn't have to be. Ik ben eigenlijk geïnteresseerd geraakt in beleggen op het moment dat ik mijn bedrijf verkocht. Dan uh, had ik wat uh, vermogen. Uh, ja, dan wil je graag wel aan het werk zetten. Je wil in ieder geval niet op een spaarrekening zetten. Ook uh, voor gedeelte voor pensioen, omdat ik ondernemer ben. Dan ben ik eigenlijk de wereld ingedoken van uh, vermogen, iets meer vermogen. Dus dan kom je vermogensbeheerder terecht, banken. Dat is eigenlijk de basis geweest van, uh, van de podcast. Ja, ik merkte in mijn omgeving ook al wel dat er wat interesse was. Maar ja, wat moet ik nou met mijn geld? Uh, rente is... Er is geen nul, ja, er is nul rente. Uh, dus uh, ja, wat moet je met je geld dat je op je spaarrekening hebt? Dus ik dacht, ja, volgens mij willen mensen dat wel leren. Dus als jij gaat beginnen met beleggen, is het misschien wel een idee om mensen op die reis helemaal mee te nemen van begin af aan. En ik weet er ook nog echt niks van. Ik dacht, ja, het is toch ingewikkeld? Uh, waar moet je beginnen? Moet ik precies weten wanneer ik moet instappen in een bedrijf? Moet ik precies weten wanneer ik moet uitstappen? Dan moet ik dat bedrijf tot in de kern snappen. Maar toen ik begreep dat het uh, nou, ook op een andere manier kon, toen dacht ik, nou, dat, waarom zou ik het niet doen? A passive investor uh, is not so much interested in picking stocks that are undervalued and, and holding them, but rather buying them and simply waiting for them to naturally appreciate. Passive really means buying and holding and waiting. And as it turns out, that can be just as effective. All of the research shows that active investing doesn't outperform passive investing. Even if one fund manager outperforms in one year, their likelihood that that same fund manager will outperform in the next year is just 20%. And the likelihood that that fund manager will outperform in the following year after that is just 10%. Passive investing can be the great, boring alternative strategy for investors who aren't into picking stocks or paying active fund managers. Well then, let's dig in deeper into the index fund, that specific, boring investment that Warren Buffett put his money on, and into the intentions of the man who first introduced it. 
Jack Bogle is the founder of Vanguard. Uh, was really an icon. I had the opportunity to uh, meet him several times because I've been at Vanguard since 1997. It was right around the time that he actually retired from Vanguard, but he maintained an office there um, all the way up until he died a few years ago. From you know 1970s all the way through uh, you know the 2010s, he was telling the same story, but telling it in a hundred different ways which was that the financial services industry had an obligation to do better for investors. He was singly focused on how does he help investors to improve outcomes. And, uh, and he thought about doing that through lowering cost and lowering complexity. There's an incentive for the industry to make it complex because if something's complex, you can charge more for it. And so if we can reduce cost and complexity for investors, it's gonna give them a better chance of investment success. In 1975, those principles were foundational in the introduction of a new way of investing, indexing. Jack was fond of saying that you could pay somebody a lot of money to go find the needle in the haystack, but why not just buy the whole haystack? And really that's what indexing is. It's buying the entire stock market and getting the return of the entire stock market at a much lower cost than what you would do if you were trying to find somebody who's gonna pick the stocks within the haystack and charge you more for it. Most people are in there for speculating, for gambling, and for trying to beat everybody else in the next day or in the next week. Um, that's a recipe for disaster, and that's a recipe for, for high risk as well. For me, I'm in the markets to benefit from the global economic growth over many, many years. And we know that the stock market has grown by 7 8% over the last 100 years in a very, very regular manner on the long game. And I'm in the market to, to take part in that. So with an index fund, we're basically following the long-term growth of the market as a whole. And as a passive investor, the long term is what it's all about. The reason not to begin every time was that I thought, no, I'm already too late. You know, it doesn't make any sense. And Pim said to me, you can do better today than tomorrow. Because finally, you have the most on the long horizon. The longer you invest, the more it will pay off and the better it actually is. Compound interest was for me actually the biggest discovery as it comes to investing. I see a lot of questions from people to me. Moet ik nou beleggen? Dan heb ik het vaak niet helemaal niet over beleggen. Ik leg altijd compound interest uit. Want ik denk, als je dat snapt, dan is het, is het een soort van no-brainer dat je vermogensopbouw gaat doen. Compound interest basically means interest on interest. A principle that will make an initial sum of money grow exponentially over time. What it also means is that the most gains are made towards the end of any given period we put money away for. Imagine that you're, you're looking at a lily pond. Somebody has just put one lily into the pond. Lilies double in size every day. And what you know is that it will take 30 days for the lily pond to become completely covered. You ask yourself, well, on what day will the lily pond be exactly half covered? So the answer is 29. Okay, now let's translate that to investing. If a person puts some money away and adds small amounts to it monthly, even at a modest average rate of returns, that money will grow exponentially over the long term, with the most impressive gains in the latter stage of any given period. The magic of compound interest is also at work when you invest in index funds, or in their modern counterparts, ETFs, exchange traded funds. And if you can keep costs low, for example with index funds or low transaction costs, that makes a big difference over the long run. The fact is what Jack saw through was that the active fund industry was relying on star managers and kind of marketing hype to build up funds that may beat the market, but may not. Um, and importantly, probably charged more than they really should have. And one of the people that happened to agree with this way of seeing things was willing to bet a million dollars on it. As expected, Warren Buffett won the bet. World's richest man just won a 10-year wager that he had with a top hedge fund manager. So if the most successful investor in the world won the bet by going the passive route, does it mean that the passive approach is always better? No, but depending on your situation and the time you're willing to put in, passive just might offer the more reasonable option. Find an index fund, diversify across asset classes, and put your money to work that way. The critical question is that we have to start, begin somewhere, whether it's $50 or 50 euros. 
to start investing in a way that will get you to that long-term wealth. So, are you an active investor looking for short-term gains and who's willing to put the time in? Or are you the kind that doesn't want to think about it all too much and who's in it for the long term? The answer will not only determine how you invest, but also how much risk you're willing to take. But more on that in the next episode.